Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast, where doubt is destroyed and your faith is lifted. Here's today's message from Dr. Glenn. We're going to spend the time in God's Word. Do you have your Bible today? All right, if you have your Bible, let's, let's open our Bible, please, to the book of Revelation chapter 8. Now, Revelation chapter 8. And while you're turning there, I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these, your wonderful people that got ears to hear, mind to understand, and heart to receive the word of the living God. Thank you, my Father, that your people are blessed in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Revelation chapter 8, I'm going to read from verse 3. Now, what is transpiring here, you know, of course, that uh, John the Revelator who, uh, had was deported to the Isle of Patmos, and he was sent there to die by the Roman authorities. Now, he was the last disciple uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, by, by the way, he was one taking care of uh, the earthly mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mary. But he was thrown there after they boiled him alive and they couldn't kill him. They sent him to the Isle of Patmos. Pat Patmos was not a vacation resort. It was a place where uh, they sent prisoners to die, to do hard labor and then to die. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and if you read Revelation chapter 1, in fact, before we read Revelation chapter 8, let's read Revelation chapter 1, please. Thank you, Jesus. Now... I want to read verse 9, please, verse 9 and 10. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, in the kingdom and patient of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now the Lord's day is not referring to Sunday. The Lord's day is referring to the emperor's day. All right, it, I was on in the spirit on the emperor's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, he was in a place where they did not expect him to have any revelation from God, but yet he was in the spirit. Now, what I want you to do is to lift up your right hand and say with me, irrespective of where I find myself, physically speaking, I can always access the realm of the spirit. Say one more time. Say, irrespective of where I find myself physically, I can always access the realm of the spirit. And now he was in the spirit. And what happened? He was transported, especially when you read Revelation chapter 5, when uh, 4 and 5, when the Lord Jesus told him, come up higher. Right? And I will show you things. So he had a revelation and he had a view of heaven. Now, very few men have seen a view of heaven. Of heaven. Now, we know, of course, that Moses uh, uh, soared into heaven to be able to get the pattern and the blueprint to build the tabernacle, all right? See to it that you build according to the pattern that you were shown on the mount. So he soared into heaven what the original tabernacle was in heaven and then he replicated the same thing on the earth we also know that isaiah soar into heaven can you say amen so we know we have at least a record of three men that have seen into heaven that be moses that be uh, isaiah and also that will be uh, john the revelator are you listening in fact let's read, let's keep on reading here for a second and it says, <clears throat> he saw the Lord, and verse 12, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now look at verse uh, 13 now. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and good about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now notice the words in verse 13. 
that he was clothed with a garment down to the foot. What he was saying, what John was saying here, was a revelation of Jesus, our high priest. Can you say amen? He was seeing him in his high priest robe. Now lift up your hands and say with me, Jesus is my high priest. Say it again, Jesus is my high priest. Now the Bible tells you in the book of Hebrews and chapter 3, Hebrews and chapter 3, the scripture says unto us, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession. Now lift up your hands and say with me, Jesus is the apostle and the high priest of my confession. The word profession here is the word confession. Are you listening? He's the high priest and he executes your confession before the throne of God. Now, having said that, let's go to Revelation chapter 8. And I want you to follow along with me today. Revelation chapter 8 and again, John the Revelator is giving us uh, what he's seeing, his vision of what's going on in heaven. Revelation chapter 8. And look what it says here. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Everybody say altar. Now what I want you to do is to underline the word angel and then underline the word altar having a golden censer. Underline these words in your Bible. Golden censer. So you, you should have three words on the line or circle right now. That's the word angel. That's the word altar. And the word altar is very, very important. Having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense. Now circle the words, much incense, that he should offer it up with the prayers. Now circle the word prayers. Everybody say after me, much incense. And then say prayers of all the saints upon what? The golden altar which was before the throne the golden altar which was before the throne okay i need you to underline the word prayers and then the golden altar which was before the throne next verse please and it says and the smoke of the incense now circle the word smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up on the line the word ascended ascended up before God out of the angels hands notice that all right and then next verse please verse 5 and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar everybody say fire of the altar Amen. And cast it into the earth. And there were what? Voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Notice that. So tonight, today rather, I want to talk to you about fire from the altar. How do we get fire from the altar? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Psalms 141. Psalms 141. And I need you to understand that the fire that the uh, angel took the, go back to verse 4, Revela uh, Revelation 8 verse 4, please. Look what it says here, glory to God. And the smoke of the incense. Let's all read together, please, everybody, whether you're online, whether you're in Jacksonville, or whether you're here, everybody, let's read on the screen, please. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, did what? Ascend it up. Everybody say, ascend it up. Yeah. Say with me, say the smoke. By the way, that's holy smoke, literally. Amen. Holy smoke. Thank you, Jesus. The smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers. Everybody say, smoke, smoke. Incense, incense, prayers. prayers. Say it again. Smoke, smoke. Incense, incense, prayers. That what? Did what? Ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. Now, let's go to Psalms 141. We're going to read verse 1 and verse 2. Psalms 141, please. Verse 1 and verse 2. Everybody read with me, please. A Psalm of David. Lord, I cry unto thee. Now, by the word cry, write the word prayer. I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my what? Voice. Now, lift up your hands and sit with me. My prayer must have a voice. 
Say it again. My prayer must have a voice. Amen. When I cry or call upon thee. Verse 2. Everybody read now. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as what? Incense. Now say one more time. Say prayer. prayer. Incense. Say it again. Prayer. prayer. Incense. Let my prayer be set forth or go up or ascend before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Now the reason why the psalmist said that is because they would have two daily sacrifices, the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice. Can you say amen? Now what I want you to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to write this down. Write the word incense and write the word prayers. Now, I want you to write this down, please. The Hebrew word for the word incense is the word ketoreth. Now, how do you spell ketoreth? I want you to write this down. It is Q-E-T-E-R-E-T-H, Q-E-T-O-R-E-T-H, and the word ketoreth literally means an aroma, a sweet-smelling aroma, a sweet-smelling aroma a holy smoke that goes up uh, into the nostrils of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the book of Genesis, the 28th chapter. Genesis, the 28th chapter. Now, say with me one more time. Say with me one more time. Say angel. Come on, say angel. Prayers. Incense. Golden altar. Golden altar. Say it again. Say angel, angel. Ascending, up ascending up with prayers, with, prayers. with holy incense, holy. with a golden censer before the throne of God by the golden altar. Amen. All right. Now, let's go to Genesis 28. Genesis 28. You need to understand the significance of altar. You need to understand the significance of altar. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand this. The strength of the oppressor is due to the ignorance of the oppressed. You got to understand that. The ignorance of the oppressed is the reason for the strength and the force of the oppressor. If you want the oppressor, if you want to take away his strength, then you've got to take away ignorance out of your life. In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, look what God says. God says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, and then we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, what does Hosea 4 verse 6 says? Let's all read together, please. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Read that again, please. My people. Stop right there. God did not even say the devil's people. God said my people. That means that's you. My people are destroyed, not even hindered, but destroyed for a lack of knowledge. This is why I said to you, the ignorance of the oppressed is the strength of the oppressor. Now, Isaiah 5, 13, please. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Look in your Bible. Praise God. Look at this. Now, everybody read now with me. Look at the screen and read. Therefore, my people are gone where? Into captivity because they have no knowledge. This is why in this church, amen, uh, when we get behind the pulpit, our objective is to give you knowledge, is to give you a revelation knowledge because I will not be responsible for you going into captivity. Oh, you're listening to me, somebody. Amen. It's not about being eloquent. It's not about joking. It's about giving you information that will change your life. Now, let's all read together, please, one more time. Verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Now, lift up your hands and say, God forbid. God forbid. Glory to God. You are going to be filled with knowledge and information. Can you say amen? Now, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, 
Christianity in the West, uh, a lot of time, have removed the supernatural aspect behind Christianity. And a lot of believers today in the West have no clue as to what the altar speaks of. A lot of pastors behind the pulpit don't really understand what the altar is all about. You, you will hear people say, come to the altar, and they will, they will refer to this, right? They would refer to the platform, come to the altar and pray. Yeah, okay, but that is not really what the Bible has in mind when it's talking about altars. Are you listening? Now, you need to understand this, and ignorance cannot be used as an excuse in a court of law. Right? Ignorance cannot be used as a reasonable excuse in a court of law. Much more in the battle of life, you cannot use ignorance as a reasonable excuse. This is why I'm saying to you, and I'm driving it to you, that the ignorance of the oppressed is what causes the strength of the oppressor. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. And I want you to write three things down before we read Genesis 28. Now, listen to me very carefully here. Write this down. What is an altar? What do we mean by an altar? You know... Everywhere you go in the Bible, you will see the word altar. Noah erected an altar before the Lord right after the flood. Abraham, the moment that he stepped into the promised land, at that time he wasn't, it was not called the promised land, but the moment he entered into it, he erected an altar at Bethel, between Bethel and Ai on the other side. They knew, they knew the, the significance the importance of altar is that in order for you to possess the land, there's got to be an altar. Now, write this down, please. I'm going to give you three simple definition of what an altar is, and then we're going to look at the third one, and then during the week in Bible study, I'll explain that to you, all right? Number one, write this down, please. An altar is... An altar, A-L-T-A-R, not A-L-T-E-R, okay? An altar, A-L-T-A-R, is a place of transaction. An altar is a place of transaction where the physical connect with the spiritual and vice versa. An altar is a place of transaction. Everybody say transaction. Where what? The physical connect with the spiritual and vice versa. The spiritual connect with the physical, giving legality to that transaction. Giving legality to that transaction. An altar is an invitation. It's an invitation to a spirit being. It can be God or it can be a demon. Are you listening? It can be what? God, or it can be a what? A demon, where you make an agreement, a transaction taking place, giving the cause of the physicality, because of the physical person and the spirit being, it gives the transaction legality on earthly ground. Are you listening? All right. Now, secondly, an altar is a place of exchange is a place of exchange. Everybody say exchange. It's a place of exchange and it's a place of change. It is a place of exchange and it is a place of change. I want you to write this down, please. The Hebrew word for altar is the word mizbeah, M-I-Z-B-E-A-H. M-I-Z-B-E-A-H. And the word mizbeah, I need you to write this down, please literally means a place of slaughter. It's a place of slaughter. A place of death. A place of slaughter and a place of death. Now, write this down. The third definition 
of an altar. This is the one I'm, I've said this to you to get to these three, and you need to listen to this. You need to listen to this. You need to understand that Christianity is not a Western religion. It's an Eastern religion. And it is, a, it is based on the supernatural, not on the intellect. It, it is, while Christianity is very intellectual, but it is based, its roots, it is supernatural. Can you say amen? All right, now write this down. This is a point that I'm trying to get across to you, point three. An altar is a spiritual system that controls the destinies of men through sacrifices and words. Did you hear that? A, an altar is a spiritual system. Everybody say spiritual system. You need to get that. It's a spiritual system that controls, that determines human destinies by sacrifice and by words. Now, by words, I want you to write this down. On the positive side, on the godly side, it's by prayers, intercessions. It is by confession. So an altar is a spiritual system that God has put in place that controls and determines human destinies by sacrifice and by words. And by words, I mean uh, prayers, intercessions, confession, of the word of God. Are you listening? Now, unfortunately, the world, witches and, and sorcerers, they have more understanding about altars than Christians do. That's why they will erect an altar, make a sacrifice, kill a goat, kill a lamb, and then make some pronunciation, some enchantment, some incantations, to use against believers. Same principle, but one is towards the positive, the other one is towards your detriment. Are oh, you listening to me now? Okay, now listen to this very carefully here. Now that you've understood the third one, an altar is a what? A spiritual system that determines controls the destinies of men by sacrifice, slaughter, and words. All right? I need you to write this down, and we will do this, deal with this Wednesday night. The battle of life is the battle of altars. The battle of life is the battle of altars. The greatest altar ever erected was the cross of Calvary. It's a place of slaughter. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of the great exchange that will bring change into your life. Can you say amen? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 28, please. Glory to God. Think along with me now. Think along with me. Now, this is Jacob on the run. From his brother Esau, who wanted to kill him. So he runs away from his brother, right? And he happens to come to the place, Bethel. Unaware to him, it's nighttime, so let's look in Genesis chapter 28, please. We're going to read from verse 11. And he lighted upon a certain place, a certain place, and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place. Look at the word stone. How did they erect altars in the olden days? They would use a stone. They would use bricks and stones to mount it up, right? And then to put some kind of stuff on it in order to protect it and then put the lamb and kill the lamb and shed his blood. Are you listening? 
He came to a certain place, a specific place. So where did he go? Now look in your Bible, please. And he took one of the stone of that place and put them for his pillows. Put them for his pillows. And the scripture says, and he lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamt. Now I want you to notice something here. Once his head, his head hit that stone and he slept, uh, he had a dream. Now what was peculiar about these stones is that these were the very same stones that his granddaddy, Abraham, had used to erect, to build an altar before God. Are you listening? And an altar is a place where you have spiritual transaction, where the spiritual connect with the physical. Can you say amen? It's a place of legal ground for God to move. Can you say amen? And unbeknown to him, he didn't know that his granddaddy was here many years ago, but God was totally aware. And when he put his head on that stone of the altar, glory to God, he had a dream. I want you please to understand that the, the altar is a place where dream will come alive. Can you shout amen? Glory to God. It's a place where, where you have an open heaven. The, the cross of Christ. The place of the altar is a place where you will have dreams. It's a place where your dream will be resurrected. It's a place, glory to Jesus, where the heaven over your life will be open. How many of you here, you want an open heaven over your life? Can you say amen? Praise God. Now look in your Bible, please. Look in your biblicals. It says, and he dreamt, and behold, a ladder. Everybody say ladder. A ladder set up where? On the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. So now look at this. Now the, So what, what did he see? He saw in a vision a what? A ladder. Everybody say ladder. Where did it begin? On the earth. Going all the way to the top, where? In heaven. And then what does it say next? And behold, the angels of God doing what? Come on, look on your note, look on the screen. Ascending and descending. Let me ask you a question. Did it say descending and then ascending? No. What did it say? Ascending and then des uh, they ascend first and then they descended. Now everybody say, the angel of God. Doing what? Ascending and then descending on it. On what? On the ladder. On the ladder. All right. Now, let's go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse 51. Look in your Bible, please. Look what Jesus. Now, come on, lift up your hand and say, I love Jesus. Come on. Say, I love Jesus. Now, everybody say, a ladder from the earth all the way to heaven angels ascending and descending all right now let's all read this is who talking now this is jesus talking he said unto him to nathaniel look at verse 51 verily verily i say unto you hereafter you shall see what come on look on the screen you shall see what heaven open and the angels of god doing what ascending and descending upon who Upon who? The Son of Man. Now let me ask you a question. What did Jacob see? He saw a ladder from the earth going all the way to heaven. Angels ascending and descending. And Jesus said, from now on you will see heaven open and angels ascending and descending. What does that tell you? Jesus is the ladder from the earth all the way to heaven. Can you shout amen? Can you shout amen? Now, who is Jesus? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So who is Jesus? Jesus is the Word. So if angels are ascending up and going down upon the ladder, and the ladder is Jesus, and Jesus is the Word, you know, angels are going up and down based upon the word can you shout amen, amen. now lift up your hands to jesus he is the ladder say it again jesus he is the ladder now 
That is the law and principle of prayer. The law of prayer states what goes up must come down. The law of prayer states what ascends will descend. Are you listening? Now, going back to Revelation, the eighth chapter, the angel with the golden censer went into the very throne room and gave the prayers to another angel. Now listen to me very carefully here. In the book of Revelation, there are many symbols for Jesus. He's called the Lamb of God. He's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Right? He's our high priest. But he's also known as the angel of the Lord. The reason being is because when that angel ascended up from heaven, from the earth with the incense, which is your prayers, your worship, your tears, it goes into the very throne room. When you read the book of Exodus chapter 30, it was the priest that would have to take the incense into the holy place. Are you listening? Not an angel of the Lord, but it was the priest, the high priest, that would have to take the incense at the golden altar. Can you say amen? Now, I want you to notice the connection between the angels going up and they give the prayers to Jesus. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? And he takes that aroma. He takes that... Uh, Sweet smelling aroma of your prayer. And it's not just a little prayer. This is why you got to join the prayer meetings. Are you listening? Because many times people do not pray by themselves. And so you got to learn to pray corporately, to pray personally. Everybody say pray corporately, to pray personally. Are you listening? Can you say amen? Before I learned to pray on a personal basis by myself, giving myself the long stretch of time praying in the Spirit, I learned it by praying corporately in church. Are you listening? Somebody taught me the ropes. Somebody taught me the ropes. Are you listening? This is why when you come to our prayer meetings, I don't talk. All right? It's just prayer, prayer, prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. This is not the time to be teaching. Prayer time is not a time to be teaching. It's not a time to be reading your Bible. No, prayer time is to pray. You learn how to pray by praying. And let me tell you this right now. Look at me for a minute now, every one of you. There are some things that will never come into your life until you learn how to fast and pray. And there are some things that will never leave your life until you learn how to fast and to pray. Are you hearing me, saints? You've got to learn to give, to offer much incense to God. What are you giving your angel? To give to God. What are you giving? Many of us, our angels are unemployed. Because your angel are not going to take up gossip. Did you hear what I said to you? Your angels is not going to take up gossip to God. Your angels not going to take up words of doubt, words of unbelief. But the moment, I want to show you something here. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. When we talk about the book of Ezekiel, most believers, because they don't read the Bible, they only know one chapter in the Bible of the book of Ezekiel. What would be that chapter? Ezekiel 37. Right? And we preach out of it. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 and verse 4. Let's all read together, please. The hand of the Lord. When the, when the Bible talks to you about the hand of the Lord, it's talking about the Spirit of God. All right. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the what? In the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round right about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry. 
Now, if you know the story, you know that the Valley of Dry Bones represented the, the nation of Israel. And the reason why they were very dry is because they've been in captivity for 70 years. All right. And they were dispersed. And God asked Ezekiel this question. He said, son of man, can these bones live? And he answered and said, oh, Lord God, you know. Look at verse 4, please. Everybody read now with me now. Again, he said unto me, what? prophesy upon these bones. See, that's the chapter that we know, that Ezekiel was told to prophesy to the bones. Now look at me, look at your neighbor and point your finger at your neighbor, point your anointed finger at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, prophesy to the bones, prophesy to your situation. Anything that has been disconnected, anything that has been disrupted in your life, anything which is in the valley right now, you can prophesy to it. Come on, point your finger at your neighbor, tell them, prophesy to the bones. Prophesy to your situation. Prophesy to your circumstance. Prophesy to your body right now. Prophesy to your finances right now. Prophesy to your children right now. Prophesy. Come on, somebody shout prophesy. But you can't prophesy until... Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 4 and onwards cannot be activated if Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 was not activated. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 3 please. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 3. Everybody read with me now please. Moreover he said unto me, son of man, eat. <laughs> Come on, look at your neighbor and say eat. I see some of you are getting excited right now by the word eat. Eat what you find. What does it say? To eat what? Eat this roll. Not the bread roll, okay? Eat this roll. Amen. And go and speak unto the house of Israel. The roll was the word of God. So, uh, read verse 2, please. So, everybody read now. So, I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. Now, lift up your, come on, lift up your Bible. Amen. Lift up your Bible. Say, that's the roll. <laughs> you got help on with that. All right. <laughs> Amen. Some of you got your iPhone. Glory to God. That's why I like, I mean, as much as I like my iPad, I still like my old-fashioned Bible. Come on. Come on, lift up your roll. That's your roll. So I open up my mouth and he calls me to eat of that roll. Everybody say, eat that roll. Okay, next verse please. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat. Glory to God. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this spake he of the spirit. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. The belly represents the spirit man. Son of man, cause your belly, cause your spirit to eat and fill your bowels with this roll that I give you. Then did I eat of it, uh, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Glory to God. Now, let me tell you right now, there is the milk of the Word of God. There is the honey of the Word of God. There is the bread of the Word of God. There is the meat of the Word of God. And there's the strong meat of the Word of God. Can you say amen? And you got to eat the honey. You got to eat the milk. You got to drink the milk. Eat the honey. Eat the bread. Eat the meat. And eat the strong meat. And fill up your belly. Once your belly is filled up with this roll, glory to God, you can then open your mouth and prophesy. What is your prophesying? Your prophesying is your praying. Can you say amen? Come on, lift up your hands. Say, when I'm praying, come on, talk to me. Say, when I am praying, I am prophesying. But you can't prophesy until you have been filled with the role. Are you listening to me, somebody? Can you say amen? you got to be filled with the roll. Now, put your hand on your belly. Glory to God. This is why you go to a church. Why, why do you go to that church? Because it's close to my house. That's the dumbest thing you'll ever do in your life. That's the dumbest thing you'll ever do in your life. Well, I've been there because I've been there for a while. Know, my great-granddaddy grew there. My great-granddaddy grew up there. My granddaddy grew up there. My dad grew up. I got married there, but you've been, you're dying there. Are you listening? You're dying there. Your family is dying there. No, 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 no. You got to go to a church where the oil is flowing. You got to go to a church where the altar's got the fire of God, where the preacher is filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with the Word. Can you shout amen? 
You got to be loyal to the word of God. Can you shout amen? And so, if you go to a church and the pastor has nothing, he can't impart into you. Are you listening to me now? Can you say amen? It's what he has on the inside of you that will determine your future. So you got to find yourself somebody who's the son of the oil. you got to find somebody who's got fresh oil in his life. Can you say amen? Now, glory to God. Now, notice something here. So, go back to Luke chapter 1. And we're going to close with Luke chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God forever. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 1. Look in your Bible. You'll see this now. Same thing happening. The same thing happening that's occurring in Luke chapter 1 was what John the Revelator saw going on in Revelation chapter 8. Luke chapter 1, please. <clears throat> well, we're going to read from verse. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> verse 5. Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's all read together, please. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain what? Priest. Certain what? Priest. What does priest do? They offer up incense. Name Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and his name was Elizabeth. Now, read verse next verse. And they were what? Both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless, please. Next verse. And they had no child. They were righteous, but no child. Blameless before God, but no child. Are you listening? All right. Because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both uh, now well stricken in years. Next verse, uh, glory to God. And it came to pass while he did what? Executed the what? The priest's office. Everybody underline that? Executed the priest's office. Uh, are you listening? Uh, before God in the order of his course. Uh, Keep on, keep on moving the, the verses. According to the what? The custom. Did you hear that? According, of the, according to the what? The custom of the priest. Now look at me. Say the custom of the priest. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say the custom of the priest. What does that mean? The habit of the priest. Now, now, how many understand? According to Revelation chapter 1, we've been made kings and priests. Right? First Peter says, you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood so according to the custom of the priest's office his lot was to do what burn incense what does incense represent uh, prayers and worship right to burn incense when he went into the temple of the lord next verse hallelujah and the whole multitude of the people were doing what praying outside at the time of the word incense all right, and there, what happened now? Appeared unto him an angel standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Same situation. Same situation. He offered up incense. His angels went up, and the angel came down. And when the angel came down, he had some news. That literally caused some earthquake in his life. Your wife, though she's old and beyond age, she's now going to have a baby. And you shall call his name John. Can you say amen? Can you shout hallelujah? Now look at me, ladies and gentlemen. If you want fire from the altar, there cannot be any fire from the altar until Incense goes up to God. And your incense will go up to God when your prayers, amen, not the Mickey Mouse praying that all of us do. Lord, thank you for this day, a good day. Help me to have a good day, amen. And then before you go to bed at night, Lord, thank you for a great day. That's not praying, ladies and gentlemen. That's just giving God a little, hello, good day, bye-bye, all right? But prayer is spending time before God. It is offering up incense before the Lord. Can I hear an amen, somebody? And God looks at your prayers. He looks 
looks at your aroma. He looks at your worship. Glory to God. And if it's coming out of the scroll that you have eaten, if it's coming out of the roll that you have eaten, that angel is going to go up that ladder, that ladder who is Christ, and give it to Jesus in the earth. And Jesus will pour it on the golden altar right beside the throne of God and then give it as fire into the hands of the angel and throw it down in the ground and when it comes down on the ground your situation will be shaken can you shout amen you see that also recorded in the bible amen paul and silas glory to god paul and silas they were beaten glory to god they were attacked by the spirit of python after they cast out the spirit of python are you listening? And Python uh, will hypnotize a person and Python will, will, will surround you and squash you. And they found themselves in chains. They found themselves their feet and their hands in chains. That's the spirit of Python. And then they found themselves in the inner dungeon. But what does the Bible say? At midnight. Come on. Lift up your hands here. At midnight. Oh, in your darkest hour when you don't feel like praying. At midnight, glory to God. Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises unto God. So what's that do? That is sweet incense. That is aroma in the nostrils of God. Can you shout amen? And that aroma went up by the angel in a golden censer and they gave it to Jesus at the right side of the altar. Glory to God. And Jesus took it and turned it as fire and threw it back down on the earth. Can you say amen? And all of a sudden there was an earth quake every man's every man's bands and chains fell off and the prison doors were open let me tell you right now every prison door that the enemy has put you today glory to god as your aroma as your worship as your prayers and as your praise go up to god when your prayer goes up power will come down come on lift up your hands say when prayer goes up come on look at your neighbor say when prayer goes up go what will happen next power comes down do you want do you want fire from the altar do you want fire from the altar do you want some answers do you want to shake the devil up now look at your neighbor and point your finger at your neighbor and tell them katoroth come on say katoroth what does katoroth means incense right and it says means what a sweet aroma but the secondary meaning of the word katoroth i want you to write this down is fumigation fumigation you know when you when you have fumigation if there's rats in your house and mice in your house and you smoke them out are you listening you smoke them out can you say amen and so in one instance glory to god the incense is going up to god a sweet aroma in the nostrils of god but on the other side it is fumigation smoking out every demon every wicked spirit the spirit of infirmity disease and calamities are leaving your life can you shout amen i don't know why there's a devil in my house because there ain't no fumigation going on Huh? There's no fumigation going on. If there is no aroma going up, there will not be any fumigation going on. Are you listening to me, somebody? Can you say amen? That's why in your home, in your home, glory to God. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, in my home, I will offer up what? Incense. Once it, once it goes up, you saw it in the life of Zechariah. The same thing happened in the life of Hannah, right? She was barren, Elizabeth, but you got to give that incense to God. That's the law of prayer. If incense goes up, fire will come down. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, Lord, send your fire down. Send your fire down, oh God. I, who, who among you here today, and those of you watching on, on the screen today, how many of you here you need some fire from the altar? I understand that fire from the altar will change your life. Fire from the altar will change the condition of your body. Fire from the altar will change your finances. Fire from the altar will change your church. Your church will not be a 
that church any longer. Glory to God. Yeah, we are tired of going to dead churches, listening to dead preachers, preaching dead sermons to dead people. No way, Jose. We want fire from the altar. Come on, somebody shout, fire from the altar. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Faith Lift Radio podcast. For more information about Dr. Glenn and how to offer your financial support, log on to glenarecchia.org. 